welcome back today we will be discussing about the mental workload measurement methods specifically which is under behavioral and cognitive methods so for, let us understand what is mental workload it is being described by in 2022 that the, it is um, the amount of mental resources okay whatever the mental resources are required to perform a set of concurrent task so we are talking about there is some kind of mental requirement which you are going to uh, know use it for performing some kind of task okay so that amount you need to measure through various types of instrumentation and techniques that we are going to work today so that is mental workload it is also uh, we can consider it as cognitive workload so sustained high mental workload definitely will cause some kind of mental fatigue it is very similar as we have in physical perspective right so if you are running then your muscles are using lot of energy and it is getting fatigue slowly so if you are working for long hours mentally or physically you are going to get the fatigue so when you are sustaining a particular type of work for longer duration it is going to cause mental fatigue so if you can measure that fatigue then definitely you can design the situation or you can design the equipment or the uh, workplace in such a way that there is no accumulation of fatigue because we know that if there is an accumulation of fatigue definitely that is going to hamper the physiological responses performance of that particular person right so sustain high mental workload definitely will cause the mental fatigue it will decrease the performance and definitely a detrimental health effects in a long run situation so it is being experimented and established in 2009 by holm et al okay so let us understand little more about mental workload so mental workload mainly describes the input aspect of the task which is like the requirements the demand made by the task on the employee now here i won't say only employee any operator of the particular system if it is at home the homemaker or the person who are getting exposed to that type of uh, demand if it is a classroom then maybe students or the teachers may be the person or maybe the operator and they are getting exposed okay so we need to understand it's not only in in terms of employee it is the person who are performing in that particular system so mental workload is a multi dimensional characteristics of the task requirement mental workload determination that is the behavior perceived sur subjective short term well being with consequences of health in a long run and psychophysiological processes are going to get affected and that is why you need to really understand the what is the status of mental workload in a particular working condition okay so if this is overload then also it is difficult or it is not good for the performer if it is under load then also it is not good for the performance what you need to do is you have to design the situation or you have to design the work in such a way so that it is being optimized okay if it is optimized then definitely the performance will be at the level of expected maximum possibilities okay so neither overload nor underload is expected in any kind of situation so when we are talking about mental workload and measuring through the indirect method two major component comes into picture one is eeg measuring system another is by eye tracking measuring system so 
first we will be discussing uh, varieties of EEG and then we will go for the eye tracking. Why EEG? EEG is electroencephalogram. The process is electroencephalography, right? So, you are trying to understand what is happening within your brain due to the exposure of some kind of activity or some kind of stimulus. So, we are going to understand that. And the second one is the eye tracking. So, when there are visual stimulus, how people are understanding it, how people are perceiving it and then how the decision is being taken care. So, that is the eye tracking measurement. Okay? So, we will be learning these two uh, technique or two method separately in this set of uh, lectures. This is very common and very much important aspect of cognitive uh, ergonomics or when we are talking about something which need to be taken care from the behavioral and cognitive perspective. So, let us understand what is electroencephalogram. So, a widely used non-invasive. So, here you have to remember this. This is an non-invasive uh, method for monitoring the brain. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand how the brain is functioning and to understand that we are going to place many electrodes on the skull and then whatever the electrical potential is generating we are going to understand or interpret the meaning of those electrical potential. So, it is based upon placing the mental electrodes on the scalp which measures the small electrical potential. The electrical potential, these electrical potentials are going to arise outside the head due to the neuronal actions within the brain. It has a high time resolution and is able to track events within the brain with a millisecond accuracy. Okay, it is very important because when we are talking about brain activity, it is within millisecond. It is not in second or in minutes. It is within millisecond and it is way, it is uh, the system, this particular system is accurate so that it can act. Uh, no measure that kind of accuracy and it is widely used uh, sensing modality for a range of health and well-being applications ranging from epilepsy diagnosis to the emotional monitoring okay so we can understand uh, various kind of pathological cases and some cases when we are trying to design a particular work environment they are also we can use this electroencephalogram. So, if we look at the history, we can see that in first in 1929, this particular type of research or particular type of uh, no, data acquisition happened by German psychiatrist. He is Hans Berger okay, in 1929. So, this brain activity what he did the brain activity is characterized by the passing of electrical impulses along neurons and post synaptic responses as neurons communicate with each other. So, there is one neuron, the another is another neuron. So, there is communication from one neuron to another and then next, then next like that neural circuits is being formed. So, it this through EEG, we are trying to understand that impulses, how it is passing. So, electrodes attached to the head detect the cumulative electrical field associated with these impulses. So, potential differences produced can be amplified because you know it is it's a very small amount you really cannot see them right. So, what we need to do we need to amplify them. So, instrument is like that we are going to 
amplify it. So, potential differences produced can be amplified and stored giving characteristics or representation of the brain activity. So, how brain is performing, what brain is thinking, what part of the brain is active, what type of decision are being taken, everything we can understand through the potential differences. Okay? So, that we are going to learn today. So, brain has a large number of electrical resources present in it. So, each neurons has intrinsic electrical pro properties. So, those things are not part of this course. So, I am not going to explain how that electrical potential generates and all those things. But here it is important to know that every neutron, uh, neuron has the intrinsic electrical properties and action potential are can be generated by voltage gated ion channels in the cellular membrane. Okay. So, there are small small you know very uh, you can measure in micron. So, you know uh, these are the voltage get, gated ion channels and through which the electrical potential are, uh, are being generated and that is going to be measured through these instruments. So, synapses operated operates based upon the flow of sodium and potassium ions. I am giving very brief description. These things can be taken in separate courses. It is not part of this course. Okay? So, the EEG can be viewed as an emerge, uh, emergent property of neural and uh, glial cell population and network and a voltage waveform with its own characteristic shape. So, every waveform has their own shape and properties appear on the scalp due to the neuronal action within the brain. And these things we are going to measure using EEG system. So, if we are looking at the classification of EEG, we can see there are majorly three types of EEG. One is free running, second is evoked and third is hybrid. We are going to describe each of them in these next slides. So, free running. Free running you can understand from the name itself that is what is in general, you know, if you are not giving any signal in free in a when somebody is not having any kind of stimulus from outside how the brain waves are there. So, the brain activity that is present due to the normal operation of the brain that is free running EEG. This EEG is characterized by dividing it into frequency bands. There are majorly 5 bands delta, theta, alpha, beta and gamma. So, you can see here I have mentioned what is the frequency of them. So, delta is like 4 hertz or less than that. Theta is 4 to 8, alpha 8 to 13, beta 13 to 30 and gamma is the activity which is more than 30 hertz. Okay? So, you can understand how brain is active if we can measure these waves, okay, we can understand at what state our brain is active. Okay? So, this is the basics of brain activity and we can understand the position or condition of the brain. Okay, this is just an example how this looks like in the uh, graph when you are going to collect your data. So, this is delta, this is theta example, these are all example. Okay, These are all uh, data collected in different other studies and we are just representing it for your understanding alpha, beta and gamma. Now, here I would like to say when a user is restful like you know taking rest, eyes are closed, then you can see a dominant alpha rhythm emerges at the back of the head over the occipital cortex. Okay. So, you are you are awake, it is not that you are not you are sleeping. Okay. You are awake, however, your eyes are 
closed. If that is the situation, you will see alpha wave is in dominating state. The process of falling asleep, so you are closing your eyes, you are resting, there is alpha wave, but slowly you are falling asleep. Then when what is going to happen? If you are going to fall asleep, then the, with the alpha wave activity, it is going to be replaced by the slower theta wave. Okay? So, you can understand if there is a shift between alpha to theta, that means initial stage you were awake, you were alert, however your eyes were closed. Now, due to uh, after uh, no sustaining that situation for, for, for few, uh, few uh, hours or minutes, that is being replaced by theta that means you are actually going to sleep you are slowly falling asleep okay so within so that way you can understand how the brain is active okay within free running eeg there are then a number of features that occur due to different brain states which will be in uh, no, uh, which will be interest for different application. So, whenever I am talking about looking at something, then you know uh, how the stimulus is getting exposed. So, these will we will be uh, you know the, the brain waves slowly will change the nature and once there is a change in the nature, we need to understand what is the background of this change of na nature and then we can understand what is exactly happening. So, this way free running EEG gives us information about the brain activity. So, this is uh, free running. Now, coming to the next that is the evoked. So, you are going to evoke the EEG through different kinds of stimuli. Maybe it is auditory stimuli, maybe it is visual stimuli. So, if you are giving a visual stimuli, how it is you no know, reacting? If you are you know, hearing some kind of sound, then how brain is reacting? So, everything we can understand through the evoked EEG and this is the major area where ergonomics uh, people, people, uh, you know, uh, the practitioners or designers uh, actually working uh, with this particular area and they are uh, interpreting or analyzing evoked EEG and trying to understand and modify or interve intervene in different way. Okay? So, evoked EEG arises due to stimuli definitely being presented to the user. If the user concentrates on a flashing light at a particular frequency okay maybe red light or maybe some some other light in at a different frequency that stimulus produces a steady state visual evoked potential which we call it as ssvep an oscillation at the same frequency as light sources arises in the EEG at the back of your head. Okay, so that is the occipital cortex. Now, similar steady state responses can also be found using uh, your audio stimuli and which is be termed as audio uh, auditory steady state responses. So, depending on the design, depending on the situation or depending on the scenario that you are working, you may work with the visual stimuli or you may work with the auditory stimuli. So, these evoked responses form the fundamental basis of many brain computer interfaces. So, if a screen has multiple light sources and each at different frequency, it is possible for the experimenter to tell which source of user is focusing on as this will be the frequency of the resulting SSVEP. So, maybe there is green light, red light, orange light or uh, some different types of light and each has different frequency. Now, e, being a uh, observer or being a sub uh, 
person who is looking at those uh, those lights I, uh, and we are going to measure the brain waves, we can understand that which is getting more concentration from the user as per these lights are concerned. Because if it is a red light of that particular frequency that is going to be there in my brain. Okay? So, that way we can understand. So, this way designers you know, design lot many experiments to understand the customer's uh, requirement as per the color, as per the position and you know, different situation. So, they take responses from all uh, these brain waves and they try to interpret the data and accordingly according to the result they are going to redesign the situation okay so that is the evoked response specifically now we are talking about visual similarly it can happen with the auditory stimuli so there are wide number of evoked responses that are responsible due to different forms of stimuli and experimental setups so event related potential like you know if there is a particular event and that is actually acting as a stimuli so that is the event related potential arise due to the presentation of individual stimuli with a gap present before a subsequent stimuli present so some common erp are p100 when what is p100 so elicit by uh, using the checkboard stimulation. So, if there is a checkboard stimulation, maybe you will get a response of P100. P means positive. Okay. Uh, N100 that is the produced by the presence of unexpected stimuli, particularly auditory when no other task is being performed. Okay. So, then N here it represents the negative stimuli. So, it is going down. Positive means it is going up. I will show in the picture in the next slide. N170, these are something which is being already experimented and described. You can have your own data. So, N170, that is the elicit when a face is present in visual stimuli. P300, which is produced by an oddball stimulation when looked for uncommon stimuli are observed in a train of other stimuli. N400 produced in response to the recognition of a face. So, these are something which is commonly available. You can refer them or you can define your category. Okay. So, here you can see that here it is 170 that means in negative deflation it is P300 it is positive deflation. So, here no face presented in a particular experiment here trials with the particular face presented. So, you can see what is the kind of brain wave differences are happening. So, this is just an example. Now, third component or third type is the hybrid EEG. By name itself you can understand hybrid means it is a combination right. So, this type of EEG is between the free running and evoked EEG. No direct stimuli are presented to the user by uh, but they are asked to think of something or imagine if they are performing something. There is no direct stimuli. So, it is not that some light is coming or there is a sound, nothing. They are asked that suppose they are doing something, they are performing something, so they are imagining. So, actually you are not giving any kind of direct stimuli. So, it is it is supposed to be free running whereas you are asking them to imagine there is a stimuli. Okay. So, that is why it is not evoked as well. So, in between. So, that is why it is hybrid. So, this can uh, result in known signal morphologies arising in the EEG. The best known such signal is associated with the some kind of motor activity. Suppose you are being asked that you know you move your right hand, you move your left hand or suppose you are in a traffic signal, you are giving a signal to move from one direction to other direction something like that. Okay. So, this kind of situation you will get the hybrid EEG. 
So, when a user is asked to imagine performing a hand movement, see here it is hand movement EEG activity. Suppose at 8 to 12 and 18 to 26 hertz decreases over the motor cortex C3 and C4. Hmm. There is an event related desynchronization. So, here you can see that left side of the head this is the kind of response that you are gain, uh, getting and here it is the right side of the get, uh, head you are getting this kind of um, so uh, here if it is the left hand movement here it is the left hand movement always you can see for the left head it is on the negative side in this way whereas in the uh, in the, in the uh, right side you can see it is more ok the deflections are more it is just opposite for the right hand ok. So, for right hand here in the left side it is more whereas here it is less ok. So, you can understand how so left brain is connected left brain is connected with right hand and right brain is connected with your left hand. So, that way we are going to you know, imagine my uh, movement and my brain is getting activated ok. Suppose I am asking that uh, you move your left hand. So, if I am I'm asking or I am trying to imagine to move my left hand definitely the motor activity of my right brain will get activated and that can be measured through your hybrid EEG ok. Is that clear? So, let us now understand how the what is the basic setup for EEG recording because till now whatever I we discuss this is the theory right. So, how this will look but we need to measure it right using some kind of instrument at the laboratory. So, now we are going to discuss that part. So, typical signal detected by the scalp mounted electrodes are in the range of 1 to 150 microvolt over 0.1 to 60 hertz bandwidth that we are going to do. So, the signals both vary temporarily and specially because position to position also time to time and so multiple electrodes are typically we should use. So, electrode positions are determined using the uh, 10 to uh, 20 standard. So, 10 20 we call it 10 20. So, named as the distance between the electrodes are measured as being 10 percent or 20 percent of the skull dimension ok. So, that way that is why it is called 10 20 standards. A pair of electrode is required in order to obtain a voltage potential differences and each pair of electrodes is connected to an amplifier. So, after su uh, suitable applic uh, amplification because we really need to do amplification without amplification we may not read them right it is because it is very small amount brain waves are very small amounts electrical potential ok. So, after suitable amplification and bandwidth limiting the signals are stored in a suitable location. The devices digitizes the signal alloy allowing them to be stored wirelessly transmitted and analyzed in real time. So, that is the basic setup. Now, how it looks? So, you can see it is the uh, top view of a scalp, uh, it is a top view of a scalp. You can see how people uh, know things are being placed. So, it is 1020 uh, as per the 1020 standard the electrodes are being placed. So, you can see they have given specific numbering also ok. So, uh, this is these are the position occipital 1, 2 then you know uh, so, so like that they have given every nomenclature properly. So, you can have so you can see here it is 10 percent here it is 20, 20, 20, 20 and then again here it is 10 percent. 10 percent ok. So, uh, if you are going to manually place them you need to really know the measurement whereas, every uh, nowadays whatever the instruments we are getting we are getting a cap where you have a specific position and you can insert the electrode through that. So, you need not to worry much. So, here uh, 
it how it actually looks like. So, uh, uh, you can see these holes are being made already. So, it is being already you know uh, designed in that way. So, a user with a head cap we call it as head cap on which uh, there will be hole and uh, this is going to hold your electrodes next to the scalp. And of course, as these are electrodes what you need to do you need to put the conductive gel ok. If you are not giving conductive gel the electrical transmissions the signal uh, capturing will not be proper. So, this gel is going to provide a good electrical contact with the head and it can act as a mechanical buffer to uh, ensure that connection is maintained even during and after head, head movement. Suppose you placed it, now you are being asked to do some activity. So, while doing activity definitely your head is going to move in different direction. This head cap is going to ensure and these gels are going to ensure that um, recording is going properly the, uh, uh, the capturing system is performing perfectly ok. So, that is why this, require, this is the requirement. So, a conceptual set of EEG recording instrumentation is required and electrodes need to be placed on the scalp which is being detected small electrical signal with next you are going to amplify it and then finally you are going to store them for your further analysis. A recording uh, the form of electrodes uh, from the EEG channel and different montages are possible depending on which electrodes are used ok. So, modern setups uh, favor referential recording as this allows any desired other montage to be derived offline by the software and this is the kind of uh, overview of the whole EEG setup. So, here you have head, so you are getting responses, so voltage, then you are going to get the voltage difference, then you are going to what uh, it, it is coming back here and analog to digital conversion is happening automatically through the programming that is there and then you are going to store the wireless communication as required or as desired. Okay, so, this is the practical setup for EEG in laboratory. So, how the signal processing is happening? You have input data, then you are going to select the you know epoch selection, you are going to select the epoch and then motion artifact removal because you know lot of motion artifacts will be there in the epoch potentials, then you have to remove them. Once you remove then the feature extraction because you know everything is not required for you, you need something which is specific to your design or your uh, experiment right. So, you are going to extract those features. Then once you are you extracted you will be selecting which one is required for that. Then you are going to normalize them, classify them and the final output you are going to get. So, this is the basic um, uh, flow of the EEG signal processing. So, let us learn little more about it. So, EEG data is the input to the signal processing chain because first you are going to get the response you are EEG major data ok. Then what you have to do you have to know about the motion artifact ok. Let us know about it. So, when the user's own movement because when somebody is uh, you have a cap on you and you there is some kind of movement it is going to affect the placement of the sensor or its contact pressure to the skin right. So, motion artifacts can be minimized at the data collection stage by ensuring the electrodes are correctly and well connected to the head. So, here is the uh, the how electrical uh, the, that gel is being introduced ok. How good gel you have kept and the positioning of your cap. So, if it is tight enough and the uh, gel is 
correctly placed then definitely you are going to eliminate this motion artifacts ok. Most approaches of removing such effect and recovering clean EEG data are based on this signal decomposition technique and independent component analysis and principal component analysis. Through this you are going to uh, remove the motion artifact. Now let us understand what is independent component analysis and principal component analysis. So, independent component analysis is going to allow the artifacts removal to be performed without having uh, to be involved with the full mathematical detail ok. You are not going to do any kind of detailed mathematical calculation whereas principal component analysis it is a mathematical conditioning is dependent on the number of EEG channel. So, there are some uh, 16 channels EEG, there are 8 channels EEG. So, based on that it is mathematically going to count it or uh, no, uh, 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 analyze the data and is going to give you the final result ok. So, it is absolutely based on the kind of data you are using, kind of experiment you are going to conduct and the kind of instrument you are going to use for data collection. Now, given the EEG input are the same as used as a in a data driven mechanical learning uh, machine learning process ok. So, simple uh, how you are doing it in machine learning process same way you have to do. Now, here sometimes it may happen that you are not uh, you know very much acquainted with the machine learning process and all those things. Now, concern is nowadays the system or the instruments that you are going to use it they do lot of simplification of the data and you may not need, may not need to know the what is happening in the background. It is already going to be programmed and it will be given the final output ok. So, data processing you, you if you want you can learn it. However, it is not mandatory for someone to know how exactly data processing is happening. You have input and then finally, you, you give the command to the system and finally, you get your output that is also possible. But many cases it happens the people are interested in the data processing because that is where their research is lying. Those cases this is important to know. So, the end uh, aim is to use the classifier to make an end decision about the current window of data being analyzed. This might be to indicate the presence of an evoked response or to classify a section of data as being associated with a high workload and a low workload. To do this a number of features are calculated from the data and a list of such a 65 features is given and it is also recognized that non-linear mathematics can provide many methods for discriminating, discriminating points of interest from, from background EEG and residual artifacts ok. So, these things you can learn in more detail if you are interested in the signal processing of EEG ok. However, in, in, in common cases where we are talking about understanding the brain activity in terms of input and the output we may not go into that detail ok. So, once everything is done finally you what you are going to do attention must be given to the performance assessment methodology for EEG signal processing and you can apply signal processing to the EEG is straightforward ok. So, that you can directly take it up. Now, let us understand more about the electrodes because this is very important what is available and if based on the what is 
uh, what is your availability you need to decide that what should be the experimental protocol and how you are going to conduct the experiment. So, mainly we have three basic types of electrode first one is passive wet EEG electrode ok. So, what is it is disposable and reusable form there is a hole in the center of the electrode to allow a conductive gel that is very important to add it which ensure a conductive path is made between the electrode metal and the scalp. So, you have the metal component of the electrode and the scalp in between there is a conductance is required right. So, this conductive gel is going to create that particular path. So, it is a transducer which converts ionic current coming from human body into electron currents that can be measured by the conventional electronics ok. So, this is the passive weight EEG electrodes. Second one is active EEG electrode. Now, it is very commonly available. So, a buffer amplifier is placed on top of the electrode itself. So, already you have a buffer amplifier there. It reduces main interference and artifacts due to the movement of the recording wires. You have lot of recording. So, it is going to do the things at the uh, very beginning. So, this wire is not going to interfere the data collection. If a buffer amplifier is included, the cable is connected to the low output impedance buffer and the same amount of induced current produces a much smaller interfering voltage. So, if you are having less interfering voltage definitely it is going to help uh, or sh show your data more clean ok. So, the high impedance node between the amplifier and the electrode is made to be much shorter minimizing the path for interference to be introduced ok. So, this is the active EEG electrode. Next and th final one is the dry electrodes. So, no need to have a conductive gel. So, earlier cases you need to have some conductive gel. Here you do not need any kind of conductive gel and this electrode is based on the 3 millimeter steel disc coated with the nitride on uh, one side and an impedance converting amplifier on the other side. So, you have two sides one side you are having uh, no nitride another side you have uh, uh, impedance converting amplifier. So, it is much more difficult to keep the electrode in place and next to the skull for longer time ok. So, this is little difficult for us because you can see these all are something metal bodies right. So, it is very difficult to keep it on your skull for longer duration. Most dry electrodes having fingers to better penetrate the hair and because you know it is going to insert and these are attached to you know springs to help keep them in place. So, you are placing it and then there will be some kind of clip. So, it is going to place it properly. However, as it is not having any kind of gel there is always a chance that there will be some kind of displacement. So, these are the kind of instruments you have mainly we have instrument which is going to be used at the laboratory research labs these are big ok. Then some are ambulatory, some are wearable and some are beyond your wearable cases ok. So, let me explain uh, each of them. Uh, of course, when we are talking about research lab this is a big setup with lot of wear, lot of detailing. So, you will get lot of accurate data if it is at the laboratory. So, it is large definitely it is non portable 
very high quality flexible in their uses okay and can be used for anything from a standard short eeg test for a clinical use which last between 20 to 30 minutes so you can see the experiment duration is quite longer also you use this type of instrument for sleep recording because you know lot of things happen during we are sleeping how brain is active during our sleep those cases we use this type of instruments and the electrode setup is typically passive weight electrodes because you can see that it is for longer duration. So, you are putting the gel and the contact is being established for longer hours ok and it always has long wears ok. So, it is a big setup and it is in the laboratory. So, you cannot do any kind of you know port it does not have any kind of portability. So, this is one type. Second type is ambulatory. So, this might be worn on the back of the head or uh, on the belt lower uh, down the body. Only a few EUG channels. So, here you can see lot many EEG channels, ok. Mostly 16 channels, 32 channels EEG over uh, research laboratory cases. Whereas, if you are talking about ambulat ambulatory, here very less number of channels present. So, you can see the accuracy level also is quite uh, uh, you know, uh, different than the research lab uh, EEG. It can be used as an uh, outpatient monitoring arrangement. So, if you want to do something at the field, okay, those cases you can use it and uh, it is cheaper than uh, any other case. Okay. It also allows the patient to be monitored in their uh, natural environment. So, that is why I said suppose you want to do some kind of study from the field. Okay. So, some worker is working in a particular field, maybe at the workplace. Okay, there you would like to monitor their brain activity. For those cases, this type of instrument is, uh, is possible for you to introduce. Okay, so first one may be in a simulated condition, whereas the second one that is the ambulatory, you can definitely use it in original, like in at, at the real time situation. Okay. Uh, so, that is the benefit of this particular type of instrument. Now, you have some instrument which is wearable in nature. It creates smaller and more discrete EEG units that are you know quick and easy to set up by the non-trained users uh, because uh, the positions are very clear. So, you have this particular thing and you have you no know, things are coming out right. So, if, if somebody is not trained enough to collect EG, still he or she can use it very easily because it is it, it's a specific guideline and the structure. So, because of this headband, it has a specific structure that can be just need to own it, right. So, it is normally based upon using headset with arms uh, that wrap around the head and rather than needing a full head cap, you need not to have a full cap. So, you can see only small small arm is coming out and there is the small electrode. So, focus on low channel counts of course, number of channels are less and allowing quicker setups and uh, the data collection of information at key point around the head rather than uh, rather than the full head montage. So, example is emotive EEG, Muse EEG and all those things. For these cases, you can have this type of synth system. Then third, fourth one is the beyond wearable ok. You can have something putting in this particular part ok. So, it is used as a hybrid approach of tattoos for non-haired region and fingered electrodes for hair regions or only non-haired EEG with signal processing used to project the ear or forehead based signals onto classical electrode position ok. So, you can see so how these things are being placed. So, this type of things can be done. However, the kind of use is very different than the research or wearable 
EEG system. So, different types of approaches for EEG are present forehead, ear episode, maybe somewhere here, somewhere on the ear plug. So, that type of things are available. Okay. So, these are the basic varieties of EEG instrument which is available and then using any one of, of it based on your availability and your research objective, you can choose that how, what EEG potential or what EEG uh, data you are going to use. Okay. Now, maybe in the next uh, slides, we are going to present that what are the varieties of systems available and then we will take you to the eye tracking uh, ladder. Okay. So, in the next class, what we are going to do? We are going to introduce you the epoch emotive device. Okay. Epoch emotive device that we are going to take in the next session. Till now, I suggest you read this theory and then what you are going to do because um, uh, these systems are quite costly okay it is not available at all uh, at all laboratory it is not possible okay but if you get a chance to see them then you you are suggested that at least you visit near uh, nearest laboratory where you have this type of system you check them you try to see can you really use them based on this type uh, whatever we have discussed if you have any doubt uh, on the lecture component and then use of the particular system maybe we can discuss it in detail now, we are going to take a specific device that is the emotive EEG device and we are going to understand that how it is being used and what is the process to be followed if we would like to use this particular instrument. Okay. So, this is a very specific instrument we call it epoch emotive EEG device. We have this instrument in the laboratory. So, that is why I have taken this. You can have many other varieties and you can uh, you can based on your ex desired uh, objective, you can use different other varieties of equipment. But this is a very specific which is connected to emotion, emotive device. Okay? So, let us start. So, Epoch Emotive device is being created by Emotive named company and it is extensively used by in the brain computer interface application. It is uh, importantly when you should know this can be used wirelessly. So, whenever we are having some kind of experiment where we need that wireless uh, recording of EEG, then we can use this particular type of device. It is very brief and intended to be read and used by anyone who wanted to start working with this particular device. So, you should read the basic documents before you, you start using this particular device. So, if we go by the kind of components we have in this epoch emotive uh, EEG system, uh, these are the major component that we have. First is neuro headset how it is we explained in earlier class that we need uh, for recording of brain uh, activity. Uh, so, we are going to record the electrical uh, uh, no movement right. So, there what we need to do we need to place the electrodes on the skull and there are varieties of electrodes available based on the type of instrument that we are using. Here what neuro headset we have? It looks like this. You have the channels put in already and it can be owned. It is not a cap. It can be owned separately and you can uh, put those electrode on the skull properly so that you can have the recording. That is one component. That is the first is neuro headset. The second one is the 
electrodes. So, you have a box of electrodes where you can store them and you can use it. Okay? We have a dongle USB driver uh, with that we are going to do the data capturing. Uh, we need some kind of saline and the software that is going to uh, analyze the uh, raw data that we are going to collect through this particular system. So, these are the major component we have when we are talking about epoch emotive EEG system. So, first let us understand what is this neuro headset. So, in actual it will be looking like this and you have position of electrodes like this in the uh, this uh, right hand cortex and then left hand. Okay? So, you have the positions of the electrodes specifically. So, this particular device will have 16 electrode which is positioned to provide a good enough 14 channels EEG signal. So, here with this particular device we are going to get 14 channels signal that you have to remember. Okay? Uh, we said that in other EEG we may have uh, no 16 channel and 32 channels like that right. So, here we are going to get 14 channels EEG signal. The device need to fits like a headset like you are wearing a gear and each electrode fits into their aimed position by a plastic and a flexible lever. Okay? So, you have some uh, lever system in this region and it is going to fix on your head on the scalp. Right? If it is hairless, if your uh, subject is hairless, then it is always good for us to handle uh, the electrodes. Whereas, if it is not, then definitely there will be some kind of chances of displacement, repositioning and little bit of noise. Okay? So, that you need to take care when you are going to do the data collection. So, this is the basic neuro headset how it looks like. Okay? Now, second is the electrodes where we are going to keep them and how it will look. So, you can see this is a particular box which will contain the all electrodes. So, total 16 electrodes are contained in the epoch emotive uh, this particular box and a large hydrator pad is present inside back of the conveyor. Why? If it is not hydrated enough, then it will not establish the connection, it will not establish the contact. So, we need something which is required to keep it hydrated. So, each electrode is covered with a soft hydrator pod on the top which is needed to be hydrated with saline. That is why in the whole kit we will have some kind of saline with us. So, few drops of saline is needed to hydrate the inside back hydrator pad and this hydration maintain the moisture of the pads of the electrode when they are not in use. So, if you are not using it for longer duration, it may happen that it is getting dry. Okay? So, if it is, it, it is dry, then there will be a difficulty to establish the contact between the, through the scalp and therefore, we will not be able to get the good result. So, it is mandatory. So, it is coming under the maintenance part. So, if you are using this particular instrument, you have to make sure that the it is hydrated properly in a periodic manner. Okay? So, if you are not using, if you are not doing any kind of data collection, still within some period of time, you have to put the uh, saline so that it is, rem it remains in hydrated condition. Okay? The third one is this USB transceiver dongle. Okay? Why it is required? So, this device comes additionally with a USB dongle which works with a property of UHF communication protocol. Okay? So, that is why we need it and when this dongle is plugged in and the device is turned on, it will be ready to transmit all data packages directly to the 
host computer. So, that is this is the main component where you are going to have the data analysis, data collection, data storage and all those things fine. The next is uh, the, the kind of uh, panel you will you are going to see on your screen. So, emotive control panel program is installed on a computer. It is used to measure the impedance of each electrode. Okay? It is going to measure that. So, see here you can see all these green things are right. right? So, if it is not connected properly the colors will be different. I will tell you that what color it will be. Okay? So, if it is not uh, connected properly it will give some other color. If it is connected properly it is going to give you a green color. So, this displays indicators that provide real time information about emo engine status and the epoch neuro headset sensors con uh, contact quality. It also exposes user profile management control because if you are using uh, if you are recording data you need to know the details of the uh, particular person of the particular uh, experiment. Okay? So, that things are available here. Now, how do you set the whole uh, thing and how do you do the data collection? So, first is setup. So, the headset contains 16 plastic electrode slot. So, every slot as I mentioned I will go and show you back again. So, here you can see you have slots. right? Okay. So, 16 plastic electrode slots will be there. Each slot is a plastic cylinder which contains a golden electrode plate at the bottom of it. Small pads are dumped with saline solution can be inserted on the small plastic cases that can be screwed into each slot. So, you have to put and then you have to screw them so that the uh, it is you know uh, placed in a proper manner. If it is loose, then you will not get the proper recording. These plastic cases can be bought separately because you know it may happen during data collection or for long years uh, it is being damaged or many something goes wrong. Okay? So, you can buy them separately and the entire set of electrodes can be replaced as well. So, what you are going to do in once these things are done you are going to insert the supplied USB transceiver dongle into the USB slot in your computer and use, uh, use a USB extension cable and position the transceiver in the prominent location away from the monitor and PC to improve the poor reception. Okay? So, that you have to maintain and then turn on the headset using the switch at the bottom end of the headset holding it close to the transceiver. So, you have to maintain the distance. Okay? If it is very far, it will not initially establish the communication between your computer and the headset that you have to remember. Now, here what are the things you need to uh, monitor or you have to be careful? You may get several types of notices when you are actually starting the uh, experiment. So, there are majorly three types of notices are there. Apart from that also if something is uh, different apart from these three it also may come, but these are the three prominent notices that you may receive while doing the, uh, uh, the setting up phase. Okay? The first one is USB dongle works much better when it is attached to a USB extension cable and located around 50 centimeter from the computer. Okay? So, you need to be very careful that how far you kept the device. If it is very far, you will not be able to establish the communication. Second one, the electrode pad should be lightly dumped in saline solution as I mentioned because that is going to increase the contact. Okay? And as more dumped they are, the connection is actually 
better. And third one is the box where the electrodes are stored contains a bigger pad that can be also be dumped into the saline solution and this will really helps to have electrode pads wet enough for the next recording session. Because suppose you are doing the recording now and maybe after um, 15 days or maybe after a month you are going to record you do not know or maybe on the immediate next day. Okay. So, if it is immediate next day definitely there is not much problem because you are going to again put your saline water and you are going to use it. However, if it is a longer duration you need to make sure you are giving enough saline solution to this pad so that it remains hydrated. If by chance it is going it is going getting dry then only you are going to have difficulties in the data recording phase. Otherwise, they will get dry and turn very rigid and it is much more difficult to dump them again to work properly. So, you have to make sure that it is not dry for when you are keeping it uh, or you are not using it for some period. Okay? So, this you have to remember. Now, how do you wear the device? So, the pad must be first separately from their plastic cases. You have to keep them out. After dumped them with enough saline solution, they can be inserted into each electrode slot of your headset. So, on the headset you have selected slots. So, you have to insert them verifying they fit deeply enough to touch the bottom of the electrode slot. This is very important. Okay. So, if it is not touching the bottom of the electrode slot, what is going to happen? It is not going to get the or it is not going to capture the data from the scalp. right? So, what you need to do? You have to make sure it is going deepest. Okay? So, each one of the electrode can be screwed tightly inside each one of the electrode cases of the device. Okay? So, that you have to make sure. Now, how do you wear it. So, here from the photograph you can see how person can wear it. So, using both hands. So, you can put it like this inside the headset down from the top of the head and place the arms these arms okay this this side and this side you have arms approximately as depicted in this particular figure being carefully to place the sensor with the black rubber inserted on the bone just behind your ear lobe so here you can place them so you can clamp it like this so, correct placement of the rubber sensor is critical for correct operation. So, it is not that at first day itself you will be able to do it properly as you keep on practicing how to insert it, how to place it probably you will be able to learn it. It is not that difficult, but at the very beginning you will not be able to do it uh, correctly. So, you have to keep on practicing. So, it is a kind of skill that you, you need to develop while doing the data collection. So, how do you place the electrodes? What is the kind of measurement you should follow? You should keep your uh, these three fingers here. Okay? So, from the ab eyebrow you should keep and the first electrode should come here. So, you can see in this how it is being depicted. Okay? So, this way you can understand where exactly the electrodes to be placed. So, these are the reference point. Okay? Now, after headset is in position, you have to press and hold the two reference sensor for about 5 to 10 seconds. Okay? So, why we are doing this? Just to locate just above the behind your eyes. So, here. Okay? Once the USB dongle here uh, it is a spelling mistake. Yeah, USB dongle is connected, a green light will start blinking. 
Okay. So, if it is the connection being established properly, it will blink as a green light. So, good contact of reference sensor is the key for the good signal. So, if it is green that means the contact is being established correctly and you are going to get a good recording. What you need to do? You have to check that the light correspondence uh, corresponding to these two reference sensors turned from red to green in epoch control panel setup screen. So, in the setup screen also you need to see how it is turning from red to green. Red means no contact, green means complete contact. Okay. So, here you can see the colors. Okay. Gently you need to press and hold each electrode's remaining sensors uh, against the scalp until all the lights corresponding to each sensor turned into green uh, in the epoch control panel. So, you can see the screen, you can see how it is being contacted. So, if the signals are green that means contact is being established, if it is red then, then that means it is not being established. If the user is unable to get anything expect uh, two red uh, sensor add saline because it say it appears that you know contact is not proper. So, you need to hydrate them. Okay, you have to add saline water. So, here you can see the color indicates the different state of signal. So, here it is red, here it is yellow, somewhere these are green, here it is orange, but here you can see that all channels are being uh, uh, you know, uh, placed properly and the contact is being established properly. That is why all uh, electrodes are showing you green color and here it is no color. So, it is a black right. So, that means no connection has been established. Okay. So, that way you have to make sure that connections are being established till you are not establishing the good contact or all are becoming green actually you should not start the data collection process or recording process. Okay. So, otherwise what will happen? You will not get the result properly. So, the objective is to achieve as many green as possible using the epoch control panel and adjusting the position of the various arms accordingly. Epoch will still function with the same sen some sensors uh, location showing yellow or orange. It is not that it will not give you result or it will not give the signal, but it is disturbed or it is not that as good as it is green. Okay. So, we will even cope with few red or black, however, the de detection will be less reliable in that particular case. Okay. So, your aim should be all need to be green. Okay. If by chance something is going wrong, so only one is not giving you green, uh, no, green signal, maybe you can continue, but you have to remember there is some problem. So, uh, how to look at the status of the panel? The top of the epoch control panel is known as emo engine status panel. So, you are trying to understand what is the status of your current uh, setting. So, this particular pan uh, displays indicators uh, that provide real time information about emo engine status and epoch neuro headset sensor qual contact quality. It also exposes uh, you know, user profile management control. Now, how? So, here you can see this particular uh, screen. So, it will give you the update about the system status, it will give you an update about the system up time, how long it is up, what is the status of your wireless signal and the battery power. Okay. So, that you are going to get from this particular section. So, what is the kind of user status information we are going to get? So, use the control to manage the user profile because when you are doing the data collection, you need to maintain the user's profile that you can manage through this particular panel and uh, assign a specific user to a specific attached epoch 
neuro headset that is possible and this control panel only displays the status information and detection result for single epoch neuro headset at a time. It is not that at a time it will show you two or three device, it will show only one neuro headset. Okay. So, the net uh, head setup like when you have all these thing in place how uh, what I was talking about in the colors. Okay. So, black color it says no signal. So, if you see somewhere it is black completely that means there is no signal or the contact has not been established. Red color that means very poor signal it is not acceptable. Orange color it is poor signal, but still maybe you can go ahead. Yellow also fair, but not exactly or not a complete uh, signal uh, connection. Okay, and green means very good signal, and you can go ahead with the green signal. Now, how do we understand the expression. So, it details the facial expression. So, you, you kept your headset over here, right. So, now you are trying to understand the expression, facial expression and nonverbal communication capabilities of the epoch neuro headset. Now, if you want to show facial expression on your that particular face, this particular face we call it avatar, you need to only perform them while wearing the epoch neuro headset. You can display these expression on the face of the this particular face okay, that is possible. So, here you can see I mentioned I cycle it on the left side of the panel this particular thing will mimic. So, suppose you are doing like this. So, this face also will show you that mimic okay. and if you are doing something with this particular side it will also show here. Okay. On the right hand side the panel in the sensitivity panel. So, you can see uh, what is happening here blinking, left wing, left right wing, you know raise eyebrow. Suppose you are using your uh, you know, um, facial muscle you are using your eyebrow. So, exactly what you are doing it is going to mimicked by this particular face showing in the panel. The sensitivity panel offers sensitivity adjustment for the expressive suit uh, detection. For each facial expression you need to check the performance of the detection and sensitivity can be increased or decreased by moving the sensitivity slider to the right and left respectively that you can do it. So, here you can you have the slider you can do it. Now, then what is the effectiveness? Okay. So, it measure and display a wide range of subjective emotional responses. So, suppose you are crying. So, how emotions are getting changed? Level of interest, excitement, engagement. So, suppose you are doing something with very uh, lot of you know uh, excite moment. Okay. So, that thing so uh, that can be experienced in the cyber environment are translated into graphical measurement. Here you can see all these graphical measurement on a control panel dials and in some cases into dynamically changing environment within games are played. Suppose you are doing some racing game. So, what is the kind of concentration you have when you are playing? So, you are rushing right. So, what kind of emotions you are getting? So, everything can be recorded in this particular or in this particular screen you can see them. It is recording is definitely happening that you can see them in this particular screen. So, it reports real time changes in the subjective emotion experienced by the user. Also, it currently displays three short term and three long term affective detections, med, uh, meditation, engagement and excitement and emotions related to engagement are alertness, vigilance, concentration, stimulation, interest all these things can be 
recorded. So, here you can see the what kind of information you are getting excitement, then here engagement, here meditation. So, what is happening? So, you can see the changes in the graphs here ok you can see the color. So, in this particular case it is sky blue. So, it is no change right whereas, what change you are getting here excitement you can see the graph of excitement here ok. So, for this particular data there is something is happening in the field of excitement. So, you can have this data available. So, it contains two graph pan set 1 and set 2 displaying the three affective uh, detection in, uh, instantaneously and long term average time scale. The top chart is configured to plot 30 second of data for uh, no current and the bottom chart is plotted to display 5 minute worth of data for long term. So, here you can see one set here you can see another set ok. So, instantaneous excitement is experienced as an awareness of feeling of physiological arousal with a positive value. Related emotions will be uh, some kind of nervousness, some kind of agitation ok that can be also recorded and long term excitement is experienced and defined in the same way as instantaneous recording ok that can be also done and you can see from these recordings. Now, coming to those were emotion now coming to cognition or cognitive side of it ok. It uses a virtual 3D cube to display an animated representation of the cognitive detection output. So, here you can see ok. So, it evaluates the uh, 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 users real time brainwave activity to discern the users consciousness intend to perform distinct physical action on a real or virtual object that can be possible here. So, the detection is designed to work with up to 13 different actions ok. Six are the directional movements like push, pull, left, right, up, down like that and six are rotation and clockwise, counterclockwise, left, right, forward, backward and one additional action that exists only in the realm of the user's imagination. Suddenly you are going to disappear, some information was then and suddenly it is going to disappear, some photograph is there it is going to disappear. So, such things also can be possible. So, total 13 different actions can be performed in this particular case. So, the 3D cube assist the user in visualizing the intended actions during the training process ok. So, this particular portion ok. The information on the right panel displays the current status of cognitive detection and allows the user to define the current set of action. So, that you have to make sure that how the current set of actions are being planned. So, that is how you are going to design your own experiment. A green check mark is used to indicate the corresponding action has been trained and orange particular cross indicates a lack of training data. So, if it is green then it is means it is training is done properly and now ready for data. So, here you can see that is cross right. So, that means training is not being done properly. So, pressing the brain but uh, train button the cognitive training process may start. So, if you are trained then you can go ahead with the further step. So, what you need to do first you have to train a neural state. Simply you need to relax because you know it is a cognitive process that you are going to monitor and get the measurement. So, you have to relax act naturally. So, it need to be like that the natural kind of environment although it is a simulated condition still it need to be naturally equipped ok. And you need to clear your mind press the train button to bring up 
the training screen here you can see it is a training screen and you, if you press go when you are ready then the process will start. So, a progress bar will appear as your brain wave are of being observed. So, already electrodes are there on your heads right. So, they, they are going to capture uh, the data and they are going to see how you are going to get through the training. Okay. So, if it is happening properly slowly the nature of this uh, thing will change. So, once training is completed you will be asked to accept or reject the training session by pressing yes or no. So, it depends for each person uh, time will be different, mode will be different uh, from experiment to experiment these things will be changing. Okay. Once you accept you will be automatically returned to the cognitive panel display. Okay. Once you accept your training is done you will be back to the cognitive panel. So, these are the basic description what are the things available for the epoch emotive EEG system. Now, here I would like to say that uh, exactly when you do or when you handle the instrument by yourself there will be so many other things will come up. Okay. This is very basic one I explained it to you, but you should practice it if you want to use this instrument at your own place you should practice it. It takes lot of time to understand each component of it and how to deal with them. Okay. It is not very uh, it is not always possible for someone to explain it theoretically lot of practical experiences are required. Now, I am going to tell where you are going to apply them. Okay. So, it is a non directly medical application of EEG technology. So, uh, specifically in case of design, in case of uh, no emotion understanding, psychological field, okay, applied psychology for those cases we use this type of uh, instrument and the data for our experimental purpose. So, brain computer interfaces for those cases also it is required. It allows the operation of a computer to be changed or adapted without having uh, the use of standard interfacing methods okay. and other applications for assisting the subject who are paralyzed and who might not be able to control a computer or powered wheelchair using conventional interfaces. For all these cases this emotive EEG epoch emotive EEG system can be used and you can further analyze the data and you can plan for the rehabilitation or you can plan for the design modification in the situation. Okay. So, these are the major applications of this particular system. However, it is not only restricted to that based on your understanding, your uh, interest maybe you can do some more uh, changes. Okay. You can apply it somewhere else which where you can use this type of data. So, in summary I would like to say the EEG has its own core application in the field of medical diagnosis. However, in the field of ergonomics, in the field of human factors understanding, in industrial situation, in design field, in uh, psychological field we can use this, but, uh, this, this information and you can really uh, understand the brain activity and accordingly we can do the intervention or we can do the changes. But many different brain computer interfaces and consumer neuroscience applications can be investigated using this. Okay. So, these are the applications you need to really understand how to read the EEG. So, that is huge uh, area of research because we will not be able to explain it within short span of time that is why we have excluded them from this particular uh, class. However, if you have any query regarding the uh, data reading, data interpretation and all those things we can contact us back through discussion forum 
or via email or something. Okay. So, that is all for epoch emotive EEG and overall EEG system. In the next class, we are going to uh, understand the eye tracking system. Okay. That is also one typical uh, method or typical uh, instrument use that how we can uh, um, indirectly understand the cognitive behavior of a person. Okay. So, that is all for today. Thank you. Thank you.